Hello folks, this is Sula once again. Welcome to another video for our Teamfight Tactics. This video is being recorded right at the beginning of set 4.5. This is a new set for Teamfight Tactics, and I'm going to use this video as an introduction to set 4.5 of Teamfight Tactics. I'm going to make the assumption that the person watching has not played Teamfight Tactics before, and I'm going to walk through some of the most basic aspects of this game. This might be repetitive if you've played this game a lot, but I think it'll be useful for newcomers. Teamfight Tactics always starts with an item carousel like this. You have eight players in the game, and there are nine champions, with each with an item that starts out here on the carousel. And you pick one, and this is the champion that you will use to first build your team. So as a quick background on Teamfight Tactics, this is a PvP game. Uh, it involves matches of eight players. You build a team of characters, or champions, using the League of Legends characters. Uh, each one of those champions will have two traits. I have highlighted Wukong here, who's my starting champion. He has two traits, Divine and Vanguard. Most champions will have two traits. There are a couple that have three. You will build a team using these characters. Uh, they are randomly presented to you in a shop at the start of each round. Uh, the game starts out with a series of minion rounds, where you uh, will fight against minions. You get three minion rounds to start the game. Those minions will drop items or they'll drop gold. And you get a couple rounds here to build your team, and then after that you'll start hitting the other players. And then that pattern will repeat, you'll have a series of rounds against other players, and then you'll get another minion round, another carousel, and then you'll have some rounds against other players, then you'll get another minion round, and then it just continues. When you win rounds, you deal damage to other players. When you uh, lose rounds, you take damage from other players. And the game continues until everybody, until every, all but one player uh, lose all their health. Everybody starts with 100 health, and eventually you'll be down to just one player. Generally speaking, uh, when having a top four finish is considered a win, and having a bottom four finish is considered a loss. Although, of course, it's better to come in first than it is to come in fourth. So right now, I am trying to build my team. I'm trying to put together a team composition here. Um, I'm kind of between a couple different team compositions. I mentioned that each champion has either two or three traits, usually two, occasionally three. You can see what traits are in play on the left side of the screen, and what those traits do is they will give various benefits to your champions. In this game, I'm going to be playing bait through the Elderwood trait and the Mage trait. Um, I'm going to talk about the Elderwood trait first because that's the one that I've kind of been highlighting. Right now, I have no traits in play. That is bad. You do not want to have zero traits in play. You're actually pretty weak in this game if you have no traits in play. And, but um, I have managed to get three copies of one of the champions. It's the one in the middle named Rakan. And he is kind of the key early unit that I'm going to be playing through. The way that the game works is you can only have so many units in the game at a time. Right now I can have three units in the game at a time. That is, you can see it says level three on the bottom left hand corner. That means I can have three units in my team. You can add more units to your team if you uh, have additional experience. You can get additional experience. You get two experience after every round. That happens automatically. You can also spend money to pick up experience. So that's another possibility and that's something that we'll be seeing an awful lot of in this game. As far as the champions go, you, as I said, you can put in as many champions as you have as your level. So right now I can put three units in. You can also combine together additional copies of the same unit. So for example, you see that I just made a what's called a two-star version of Garen. That is, if I have three Garens, they combine together and form a two-star version, which is a stronger version of that same unit. Right now I have a two-star version of Garen, and I have a two-star version of Rakan. You can see that they are larger units. They have a little silver indicator next to their health bars. So three copies of the same unit make a two-star version of that unit. If you have three two-star versions, that's nine total versions of the same unit, three, three, and three, you make a three-star version of a unit, which is very powerful. However, it's also hard to get, and generally speaking, you're better off not going for the three-star units. In most cases, there are exceptions, but generally speaking, you are usually better off not going for the three-star version just because it's difficult to get them and it's not terribly consistent as far as finding them goes. This player I'm hitting right here, Rigatoni, has two two-star Yasuos, and this person is going to try to find the three-star version of Yasuo, which is a common strategy if you're playing the team that he's running, which is a duelist version of a team. So note that I lost that round. 
I uh, took six damage because I lost that round. The way that player damage works is the more damage that you take, or uh, the the like the uh, more units that survive, the more damage that the other player takes in combat. So if you narrowly lose a round, you won't take much damage. If you get like destroyed, then you'll take a lot of damage. That's typically the way that the or that the uh, damage works. There's a flat amount of damage, which is based on the uh, round. So we're we're on stage two right now at the top of the. At the top of the indicator, you might see it says stage two, three. You don't take a lot of damage in stage two, uh, but you will always take some if you lose. And as the game goes on, you take more damage for losing rounds, which the game kind of has to do because as the game goes on, people have to get knocked out. And you, uh, you know, we slowly narrow the field down until we're down to just one player. So you, if you lose, you want it to be a close loss. And this is a loss, but fortunately it's a close loss. Note that I only take two damage, which is not that bad. All right, so some more basic stuff. You want to win as many rounds as possible. Obviously, winning is better than losing. Uh, if you win rounds, you do not take damage and you deal damage to other players. So it's simultaneously good in both of those respects. But you also can get additional income if you win a series of rounds in a row or if you lose a series of rounds in a row. And I'm gonna talk more about that in a minute. So here we have our second item carousel. Note that in terms of who gets to go first, the players with the least health go first. So there has to be some kind of catch-up mechanic in this game, and this is the primary catch-up mechanic in Team Fight Tactics. The lower your health on the carousel, the earlier priority you will have in terms of getting items. And that can be important because you can make key items if you get the, uh, you know, if you pick first, you're more likely to get the item that you want. Although it's still not guaranteed, there might only be one copy of that item and it might start on the other side of the carousel and the other person over there might just grab it. But in this case, I am in fact able to get an item that I want. I wanted to get a second tier. I wanted to put a blue buff on my Rakan. And so that's the setup I want. I don't really have the team that I particularly want just yet. I'm still trying to make that. I've actually gotten kind of a weak start here. I've, I've gotten a rather poor gold start as well. So I'm trying to put this together. Note that at the moment I have no traits. I realize I have two Twisted Fates in, and then I'm going to go ahead and make the Twisted Fate here. What I'm trying to do is play a team composition that's based on Elderwood and Mages, and at the moment I don't have that in, so I'm kind of weak at the moment. But the one thing I have made is I've made a two-star version of that Rakan, who is a very strong unit in this patch version. Later patches might not be the same thing, but for the moment, Rakan is a very strong unit. What Rakan does is he will dash around the map and he disarms the champions he goes through, which means that they can't attack for a couple seconds. So note that whenever his little monobar fills up, he will go ahead and dash through and disarm units. I have given him an item that is made by combining two tiers together. That will give him additional mana. Now you might also notice that I bought a unit that was glowing, so let me talk about that for a minute. This game uh, has something known as the chosen mechanic. Uh, occasionally you will get chosen units in the shop. They will start out as two star versions of a unit, so they just start out at two stars instead of one star like all the other champions. And what they get is they will get bonus stats of some kind. So I have a two-star version of Vi here. Vi is my chosen. They will roll one of their traits to be their chosen trait. So Vi's two traits are Warlord and Brawler. She has rolled Brawler as her chosen trait, and that means she counts as two copies of a Brawler. I actually only have two Brawler units in at the moment, but Vi counts for two of them because, like I said, she rolled Brawler as her chosen trait. And so that's why I have three brawlers, even though I only have two brawler champions in right now, Nunu and Vi. So the Chosens are very powerful. You might say, well, why don't I just get as many Chosens as possible? Well, you can only ever have one Chosen in at a time. If you have one in, they will not show up in the shop. So this is one of the really cool mechanics in set four, uh, set four originally, and now also in set 4.5. You can only ever have one chosen, and so there's a big question about do I sell my current chosen and look for a new one, or do I stick with the current one, I like, or how long do I stick with the current one? By the way, there we have an extremely rare double loss. There was just no winner of the round. It went on and on and on, and there was no winner. So when that happens, there is a double loss, and both sides take damage. As I said, that almost never happens, but it's, uh, it's always good for the rest of the lobby when it does, because... Both of those players take damage, and there's five losers instead of four in that round. Alrighty, so here are the traits that I'm playing through. I now have three Brawlers in play. Brawlers get additional health and extra attack damage. So Vi will get extra health. She has bonus health by virtue of being cho chosen, and then she will also get bonus health by virtue of 
uh, having that Brawler trait in play. The other trait, and the more important one for this round, is Elderwood, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But we have completed the initial uh, Stage 2. Note that we had three rounds against other players, then a carousel, then we have two rounds against other players, and then a minion round. And in this minion, in minion rounds, you get either more gold or you get more items. And here I get a very rare item known as a spatula. What the spatula does is you can combine it with other items to make, uh, to change the traits on a unit, which is very rare. Uh, and as you might imagine, giving units traits that they don't normally have can be very powerful. So I'm going to look to make an elder, use this spatula to turn another unit into an Elderwood unit that wouldn't normally have the Elderwood trait. So that's what I'm going to look to do with that. The spatulas are very powerful, but they can be a little tricky to use. You want to make sure you're getting good value out of them. But if you do, if you can kind of fiddle with the game and make units into traits that they don't normally have, as a, you might imagine, that's quite powerful. So uh, I've won the last two rounds, and this is a good opportunity to talk about how the in-game economy works in Teamfight Tactics. So you might see I have 33 gold right now. I've been trying to save up gold after the initial rounds. I kind of got off to a poor economy start here. So the way that the in-game economy works is you always get some gold at the start of each round. The base amount is five. Uh, the first couple rounds, you get less than that. But uh, after the initial couple minion rounds, you always will get at least five gold. In addition to that, you will get gold based on whether you are on a winning streak or a losing streak. Note that I have the little three with the fire icon next to my gold. That means I am on a three match winning streak. By the way, I get a really, really lucky, uh, uh, really, really lucky pull in the shop here. I find an early Aurelian Soul, who's going to be my ideal carry for the game. Aurelian Soul is the dragon down there. Uh, he is going to be my featured unit, so we'll have more to say about him, but I want to continue this discussion. As I said, so um, I have the little fire icon. That means I'm on a three-match winning streak. If you're on a winning streak or a losing streak, you get additional income, and that's really important. So you want to try to be on a streak if possible. Obviously, it's better to be on a winning streak, but sometimes a losing streak is not the worst thing if you're narrowly losing rounds. So you have to uh, win or lose at least two rounds in a row to start getting the benefit. But uh, for two or three rounds, you get one extra gold. So instead of five gold, you'll be getting six. If you can carry your streak up to four matches, then you will get uh, uh, two extra gold instead of uh, one. And then if you can get five or more, you will get three extra gold. Now, obviously, that's a big deal. If you are getting eight gold per round because you're on a long winning streak, that's a lot more than five gold per round. That's what, like... 50, almost over 50% more. So going on long streaks is a really, really useful thing in this game. There I'm able to find two Lulus and get to Lulu two star there. So that's half of the equation. The other half of the income equation is how much gold you have sitting in your bank. If you, you get one extra gold at the start of each round for every 10 gold in your bank, up to 50. So if you have 10 gold, you get plus one gold at the start of the next round. If you have 30 gold, like I have right now, I have 33, I will get three extra gold. So at the moment, because I'm on a four match win streak and I have 30 gold in the bank, I would get five plus two plus three. So I would get 10 gold at the start of the next round. Uh, and that works up to 50 gold. If you have 50 gold in the bank, more than that doesn't help you at all. So going on long streaks, super important. Also having a lot of money in your back pocket, very important as well. Now the trade-off is if you just sit there with gold and you're losing lots of rounds, that's not good. You're bleeding out, you know, you don't want to bleed out too much health while you're just sitting there with like 50 gold in the bank. So this is the trade-off for the game. You want to try to win rounds as much as possible while also conserving money because money can be used to put towards pushing to higher levels and higher levels means you get to play more units and you also get access to more expensive and better units, which I'll talk more about in a minute. We do have a carousel here and the item I want is the cloak, the Akali with that cloak because that will allow me to turn a unit into an elder wood. The spatula plus the cloak makes a unit into an Elderwood unit. And I have managed to get the item I want. I'm going to be able to use this spatula. And I'm going to turn Aurelian Soul into an Elderwood unit. That's the dragon who's in the corner of the screen. He is my featured unit. He's going to be my carry unit, the unit that is my primary damage dealer. By the way, we also get something known as a lantern here. This is one of the new mechanics in set 4.5. It's going to allow us to put a target dummy down, who just is a unit that doesn't attack, just stands there and soaks up damage. Not one of the more interesting things. And I also get an extra chain vest. Everybody gets the lantern uh, at the same time. As I said, this is a new feature 
in set 4.5, and it can do a couple different things. So now Aurelian Soul is an Elderwood. He is not normally an Elderwood champion, but now he is because I used the spatula to turn him into an Elderwood unit. So this means he's going to get the Elderwood bonus. Um, so what exactly does that do? I've been talking about it, but I want to highlight it, and I will read the official description here. Elderwood, every two seconds, all Elderwood champions grow, gaining bonus stacks. This effect stacks up to five times. So at Elderwood 3, which is what the trait that I have, they get extra armor, which is defense against physical damage, extra magic resist, which is defense against magic damage, extra attack damage, which is physical damage, and also additional spell power, which means their spells do more damage. Now, it wasn't enough to win that round, but Aurelian Soul did do the most damage on my team. You might have seen that there. So basically, as the fight goes on, they will get additional uh, uh, defenses, armor, and magic resistance. They'll get extra physical damage, and they'll also get additional magic damage. So as a spellcaster, Aurelian Soul will do more damage on his spellcasts, and that's really good. It's, it's really, really useful because all the other units that he synergizes with in an Elderwood team composition are also going to be getting that benefit. And I want to get enough Elderwood units to get up to the six bonus, which is a bigger bonus. It's instead of getting five... Uh, five additional spell power per stack. He gets 10 additional spell power per stack. And he will be very, very strong if he can get to Elderwood 6. And he can get all those additional stacks. So we did lose that round, unfortunately. You might notice that the Aurelian Soul is shooting little, you know, laser blasts across the screen. That is his special ability. Every champion has an ability. When their mana bar fills up, they cast. I should have mentioned this earlier, but the way that the mana works is you get mana for attacking and you also get mana for taking damage. There is the um, income there. I'm highlighting it because I just managed to get up to 50 gold. Now, this is where the trade-offs in the gameplay come in. I really want to get up to level 7. I wanted to level to 7 earlier, but it would have been too expensive to do so. It will cut into my income. And here I find some more units that I want. I get somewhat like, not somewhat lucky. I do get lucky to find the Zaya, who is the first unit that I picked up. Um, so I want to play more units, but I also don't want to cut into my income. Like, uh, if I, you know, I can level here, you can spend money to buy units. It costs four, X, four gold to buy experience. Four gold for four XP. Uh, I can do that, but it will cut into my income. Like, right now, I can go to level seven, but it will cost me 20 gold to do so. If I go below 20 gold, then all of a sudden, I... Uh, you know, then I'm not over 50 gold and I'm getting less money. So you always have to be thinking about those trade-offs. But now I do want to go ahead and make it to level 7 because I want to play more units. So I'm going to retire. Uh, I'm going to retire the Bran there, who was a, a, a weak early mage. I'm going to replace him with Vagar. Vagar is also a mage, but he has the Elderwood trait. And then I also put in Zaya, who is another Elderwood. And uh, Zaya has the Keeper trait, which is the same trait that Rakan has. Keeper causes all the units standing next to them to get a shield, a damage shield at the beginning of combat. So now I have six Elderwood, so we get the bonus stacks. And I also uh, and I also have the still have that brawler benefit, which makes my frontline tankier. They get extra health from that. And I've got the three mage trait in, which I should mention the uh, mage trait causes mages to cast twice. Each spell cast is a little bit less powerful, but they cast twice, which is really nice. Uh, Aurelian Soul's ability in particular does bonus damage if he hits someone twice, so you pretty much always want the Mage trait in if he's going to be playing. And note that I cut through that team comp pretty easily now that I, I've kind of made the core of my team composition. Six Elderwood, three Mages is the core of this team comp, so I've kind of made that. And it was worth leveling there, even though it cut into my income a little bit, because it made me so much stronger. All right, so I've talked a little bit about why you would want to level in terms of getting more units in play. However, higher levels also increases your access to better units. So if you look at the interface there, if you look to the right of where it says level seven, you'll see some percentages, 22%, 35%. I have unhelpfully clicked onto a different screen at this point, but I'll go back to my own screen soon enough. I am scouting the other teams. You can always see what other people are playing. This is a game with perfect knowledge. You can only see what the other players are doing, so you can always check to scout. I was looking to see who looked strong and who looked weak. But to get back to what I was saying before, the percentages, 22%, 35%, 30%, 12%, 1%. What those are, are those are the odds for the various cost units to appear in the shop at the beginning of each round. So right now, 22% odds to get the one cost units, 35% for the two cost units, 30% for the three cost units, 12% for the four cost units, 
and 1% for the uh, legendary units, which are the five cost units. So you want access to the better units because they are just stronger in terms of stats. You can always, like you can see how expensive the units are. So for example, down there, Annie is a two cost unit, Akali is a three cost unit, Darius is a three cost unit, etc. So you can see how that works. I was very lucky to get the Aurelian Soul because he is a four cost unit, which means he's one of the better units, one of the stronger units in this game. And he popped up with only 5% odds in the shop. So that was a very lucky pop. Uh, and I also got Zaya at relatively low odds as well. There, Zaya is also a four cost unit. They are gonna be the core of this team. And generally speaking, you will um, want to move into more and more expensive units as the game goes on. They, are, they just have stronger abilities. They have higher base stats. And if you are still playing the one and two cost units as the core of your team, uh, at the end of the game, you're probably going to lose to people who have moved into higher tier, more expensive units. Like Aurelian Soul just like blasts the whole board with his ultimate uh, when he casts, and that's a lot stronger than I don't know, uh, say Brand who puts a little pillar of fire under one target. So anyway, I just barely lose that round. It's unfortunate I haven't been able to get on another long winning streak, but uh, I still feel like my team's pretty strong here. I am concerned about that person Ocean Corona because they are very rich. You might note they have. Um, they were, uh, had max gold in the bank. You can see how much income the other people have. Uh, it's the number of gold coins to the side of the, uh, the number of gold coins to the side of their uh, little starting area. You are on the left, they are on the right. That person had five little coins, so indicated they are over 50 income. Now we've got another carousel. I've got a couple choices here. Ultimately, I am going to go for the belt, and that's because I want to make a specific item on Rakan here. I am going to take the uh, Giant's Belt and the Chain Vest and put a Sunfire Cape on him. Sunfire is one of the strongest games in this current version of Teamfight Tactics. It's been a good item for quite a while. What it does is it provides extra health, extra armor, and more importantly, it provides a uh, burn effect to any units near the user. I don't know if I'm going to highlight it here or not, but um, basically any enemy unit that stands near the individual, they will get a true damage burn effect that ignores armor and magic resistance. It's not much, but it does add up over time. And it also reduces healing. It cuts any healing they might do in half. Rakan is a very useful person to put the Sunfire Cape on because his ultimate causes him to dash around, uh, disarming people on the enemy team. And so he will apply that um, healing reduction and that burn effect to a large number of people on the enemy team. You really want some kind of healing reduction. Uh, it's the little crossed swords icon over the top of them, but you really want healing reduction on at least one of your units because, as I said, there's a lot of healing here in set 4.5. So he will dash around, as you said, he's got that blue buff, so he casts more often, so he'll dash around, disarming people, putting that burn effect on him, and he's one of the more important units on my team. So I'm kind of playing through the Rakan, through the Zaya, and especially through the Aurelian Soul. Note that on the damage chart, Aurelian Soul does the most damage, uh, I believe Rakan actually did the second most damage that time. And then Zaya did the third most damage. As I said, they're the core units in my team composition. So I'm I'm trying to two-star more of my units. I actually haven't two-starred that many of the units. The only two stars I have are the Lulu and the Rakan and then the Vi, who is the Chosen. So I'm still looking to two-star more of my units. I'm trying to think here, do I want to level? So like I could level to level eight right now, which would make me stronger. I would be able to put in the uh, the Shivana that I've been holding on my bench, she would give me another brawler, give me four brawlers that would give me more tankiness, more frontline. But I would have to spend, what is it, uh, 26 gold to do it. I just didn't want to spend that much income. So that, again, is really the meat of the gameplay, is thinking, do I level here to put in more units? Uh, or how strong am I relative to the rest of the lobby? And these are the kind of things that you get better at knowing with more practice. You need to know when you need to spend gold to get stronger and when you can just focus purely on um, pushing income, pushing to the next level. So I, I figured there that I could probably, I thought that I would beat most of the other players in the lobby. So I thought I was safe to continue pushing econ and we're gonna see a player get knocked out there. Uh, actually, I think by the same person I just hit, I was in a ghost round there. So I have gotten quite lucky in terms of getting the Zayas. I'm very happy that I've continued to get the get the Zaya two stars so early. Right now, the big thing I would want is I would want to two star the Aurelian Soul. That would really, really help me out a lot. So I'll be looking to do that. There is one other thing I haven't been doing in this game because I've been in a relatively strong position throughout the game. And that is the other thing right below the level seven. You might notice it will say refresh two gold. 
So every time that you start a new round, you get a free set of, um, you know, five champions down there in the shop. It's just random what will pop up based on your level, based on those odds we've already talked about. But um, you can re-roll the shop if you want. It costs two gold. You can get a new flop of champions and see additional champions. And so one of the things you have to do is if you're not getting stuff that's, you know, particularly strong is you have to spend money to roll. And spending money to roll is, one again, one of the big decisions in this game. If you are losing, you need to spend money to roll and try to get stronger, try to find stuff that you're looking for in the shop. But of course, if you're doing that, if you're rolling for champions in the shop, you are not pushing levels, you are not getting stronger in terms of getting more experience. But by the same token, if you're losing, if you're bleeding out health, you, you don't just want to sit there like trying to level like an idiot while you, you know, go down to zero health and die. So again, these are the questions, the, the trade-offs you have to think about in the gameplay. And it's really fascinating, to me at least, thinking about those decisions, about when to roll, when to level, how strong am I relative to the other players in the lobby. It uh, really does make for a great strategy game experience to be thinking about these things. Um, so anyway, and of course there's, there's, you know, there's randomness in the game too. Who you hit in the lobby, how strong they are, what champions you hit in the shop, I've often compared this game to FTL, Faster Than Light, one of my favorite games in the sense that in FTL, you know, you don't know what, um, you know, what stuff you're going to hit in the shops along your journey. You don't know what weapons you're going to get. You don't know what enemy ship designs you're going to get. You have to kind of play through, work with the randomness, play through it. And sometimes things aren't always going to work out, particularly here in Teamfight Tactics. As you play people who are stronger, you're going to hit stronger opponents. Sure, when you, uh, particularly if you're in ranked play, where you are, um, you know, here, this is a normal game, so you're more likely to just get random opponents. It's not totally random, there is a hidden matchmaking rating, but it's a bit more random in terms of who you can hit. With uh, ranked play, though, as you move up the ladder, you're going to hit stronger and stronger opponents. You're going to hit people who um, know how to manage their economies, who are going to build strong team compositions, and you have to get better and better at understanding the game, or else, uh, you know, it's going to fall apart for you. So like this team comp that I hit right here, Best Ellipse, that person actually had a two-star version of Aurelian Soul. I only have the one-star version. One thing I haven't found is additional Aurelian Souls past that first one. But I was still able to win because the rest of their team comp was not that strong. And because I have so much um, income bank, because I have so much health banked here, I still have 81 health, which is a lot for this stage of the game. I am content to just continue putting my economy towards leveling. I want to try to get to level 9. And at level 9, I will go ahead and sell the Vi, who is my Chosen, and then I will roll for a new Chosen. I will try to find something stronger. Vi has been a solid choice. I wouldn't say she's been exceptional, but she's been solid. Uh, she's been a solid choice, though, and I can retire her. She is not integral to this team composition. I will lose two Brawlers, so I drop down to from four Brawler to two, but as I said, my key units are not really the Brawlers. The key units are the Elderwood units, so I'll be looking for a stronger Chosen. In particular, at level 9, it's the only place where you can find Legendary Chosens, that is, a Chosen version of the five cost units. So I'll be hoping to find one of them, or something that fits my team really well, like a, a Zaya Chosen, or a, a Aurelian Soul Chosen, something like that would make my team comp really strong. But I've kind of been tearing right through most of these other teams, and I can actually get quite a bit stronger. I still have a number of one-star units on my board. In particular, the Aurelian Soul's only one star. I can replace the Vi with something stronger. And here I'm looking at the different units and there's a couple of different options here that are pretty good. I had the option to get some defensive items like the Quicksilver Sash. I could get another Chalice. I already have one Chalice. That's an item that gives additional spell power to some of your spellcasters. That would also be a good choice. Ultimately though, I decided to go for the Orn. Orn is a legendary unit and he can certainly fit into this team composition. I would, want, have, to, I would have to take out an Elderwood unit in order to play him. And, uh, and honestly, I probably should just take out Nunu and play the Orn here. But I thought about it, and because I hit two-star um, Nunu right here, I decided that I would end up uh, keeping the Nunu because he's actually pretty good right now. With the four Brawler benefit, Nunu is actually pretty good. I figured, well, I'll have other opportunities to find Orn. I'm going to go ahead and put this Guardian Angel on Zaya and make use of that because the Guardian Angel is a very good item on her. It will give her extra attack damage, it'll give her a little bit of extra armor, and in particular, it will cause her to come back to life once uh, when she dies. So really, really useful because she's one of my top carries. So I think that was a defensible choice. Orn is a good unit to have. If you want to play Orn, you generally want to get him in early. He is a new unit in set 4.5. He will make items for the rest of the team. Uh, he himself is not that strong, but he forges items which are quite strong. So we're up against Rigatoni, who is playing this Duelist Yasuo team comp. 
Uh, you might notice that the Yasuo is healing for a ton of health. That's kind of what the Yasuo does. So what we really needed was to get the healing debuff on him from uh, uh, from that Sunfire Cape, but uh, it looks like Rakan was not able to get the healing debuff on him, and that's the main reason why we lose that round. Rigatoni is the strongest other comp. It looks like it's going to come down to probably the two of us. You can see he's on a lengthy winning streak right now. He's playing six Duelists. Duelists are in a team composition that get additional attack speed. And it is a team comp that typically plays through a three-star Yasuo. This is kind of one of the exceptions to the don't go for three-star units. Yasuo is kind of an exception to that rule. If you're playing him, you will want to try to three-star him. And it turns out that Rigatoni has done so. So we are getting down to the last couple of uh, units here. I mentioned that I'm going to go to level 9. I can see that there is a minion round coming up. Remember, the pattern is always the same. Three rounds against other players, then a carousel with items, then two rounds against other players, and then a minion round. Oftentimes, if you uh, can make it to the next minion round without leveling, it's often a good idea to do that because you kind of get like a free round when you get one of those minion rounds. So here, it looks like we're going to die to the Trist, but nope, actually we're okay. And we knocked this person down to 1 HP. <laughs> Would have been nice. I actually wanted to knock that person out because I believe they have, they're also holding Aurelian Souls. This is something that's useful to keep in mind. And here I find a two-star Kale, who I'm not really planning to play. I was just kind of holding because she has some synergy with Zaya. But uh, I think I ultimately will not end up playing this unit because I find better stuff at level 9. Uh, one of the things that's important to keep in mind is the units, the champions, they are all shared across players. So there are not infinite numbers of these units. There's a set number of each one and all the players share them. So the fact that someone else has a two-star Aurelian Soul does make it harder for me to find Aurelian Soul. There's only 12 Aurelian Souls total in the pool. So if someone else has three of them, then that means that there's fewer of them available for me to find. And this can be an important factor in terms of playing like what comps you're going to play. Anyway, so here we're going to roll. We're going to look to roll for extra stuff. I consider going for the Zaya three-star. I think I ultimately reject that as just too expensive. And then, oh my god, I found a chosen Aurelian Soul. Uh, with the mage trait. So he is going to, I'm going to put the same items back on Aurelian Soul, but he's a two-star version and he has bonus stats because he's a chosen. Ultimately, I decide not to play the, um, ultimately I decide not to play the uh, Kale because I'm not really playing through Kale's trait, which is Executioner. And instead, I'm going to put in the Zillion and the Yumi. Zillion is a legendary unit. He will revive, uh, he will chrono shift two units and so that they come back to life when they die. Uh, very useful for this team composition. I've tossed in the Yumi as well because the Yumi will give me additional, uh, will give me a trait called Mystic, which gives everyone on the team magic resistance. It's uh, it's very good in the late game because it benefits the entire team. Uh, here, unfortunately, my Aurelian Soul got uh, eaten by the Nunu on that other team, and Aurelian Soul did 15,000 damage. So we can still get stronger here. Now I'm looking to see how I can fill out my team, and I've got an Orn here, and I'm considering, do I want to play the Orn? I'm like, hmm, he's got to be better than something on my team comp, right? And I'm still trying to figure out what that is. By the way, I could have had the, could have had six Zayas there. May have been worth just playing another Zaya. I'm also seeing some Yones, which might be useful to get. So I'm trying to think how I could possibly get this in. Ultimately, I sell that, which I think is a mistake. I think I should have held on to the Orn. And then here, I get double uh, Zillion. So I'm going to be able to make the Zillion two-star, which makes my team a lot stronger. I don't think that my decisions were the best here, though, in terms of what units I was holding and which units I was dropping. I think it might have been useful to hold those Zayas just because no one else was playing Zaya. If I were to hit the three-star Zaya, that would just be a, a like an auto-win condition. Uh, I would 100% win if I were able to get that. But I do have the Zillion, and those Chrono Shifts are going to be handy. I have Rakan uh, was around in order to get the... Uh, looks like the healing debuff wore off on the Yasuo, but I think we're, we're strong enough at this point just to finish that off. He's trying to kill the Aurelian Soul, but the Aurelian Soul's healing. I have an item on Aurelian Soul that causes him to heal every time he ults. So here, we're going to look to continue putting our team comp together. Uh, we are now in the top four. There's a little gold, little sound effect and a little gold border icon that shows up. But um, I'm going to have to look to beat Rigatoni if I'm going to win this. I actually did play Rigatoni's Ghost in the last round. What I mean by Ghost is when there's an odd number of players, sometimes you get a Ghost round where you are not you are hitting another player, but you're hitting their Ghost. You don't actually deal damage if you beat them. So it's kind of a you kind of a round that doesn't really help you that much. You can only lose, not win. Now I have picked up some useful stuff. I did manage to get a Zephyr off of one of those recent uh, minion rounds. 
So what that does is it removes one unit at the start of combat for the first, I think it's the first six seconds of combat. Very useful item. So uh, now that I know that it's pretty much down to me and Rigatoni, I'm going to be trying to focus his Yasuo with that. Because if I can get that Yasuo out of combat for the first few seconds, that's going to help me a lot. Look at how close these rounds are. We both have a ton of healing. Really wish Rakan was still alive so I could cut into the healing on that Yasuo. So I'm going to get the ults off. And I actually trigger the Guardian Angel on the Yasuo. And hey, that's enough for us to win that round. I actually thought I was going to lose that round, but it turned out it was enough. Now we've got another item carousel here. And as it turns out, oh, there's another Elderwood spat. I was like, oh my god, this is this is crazy. Another Elderwood spat? I can turn another unit into an Elderwood? This is fantastic. It'll let me replace one of my weaker units with a new unit. Um, that's not normally an Elderwood unit. And in fact, I have a straight replacement that I can do. I can take out, uh, let's see, what is it? I can take out one of my weaker units. I'm going to take out the Shivana, and then I can just play, um, you know, I can take that out, and I can put in set. And now he is going to become an Elderwood unit. Shet is another legendary unit. And now I want to try to get the Orin into this team composition. I'm trying to see how I can do this. There, I'm going to take out the Nunu and put in Orin for, uh, he will maintain Elderwood. And as it turns out, and, and I'm also going to replace the, um, also going to replace the uh, Yumi with a Shen. So as it turns out, I've actually got a little bit of excess here. Um, I actually have seven Elderwood and four Mages. I was trying to find a way to get up to... Uh, I was going to try to find a way to get up to the nine Elderwood, but I think it just wasn't possible in this game. I preferred to play more Legendary units over going up to the nine Elderwood, even though that is a really strong synergy. Uh, here I'm up against the other player who's not uh, Rigatoni. If I win this round, I will eliminate this player. So I'm hoping I can do that. I still got Rakan in there, still applying that healing debuff to the enemy team. And I think we've got enough to finish this off now. Looks like we're good, and we will eliminate Ocean Corona. So now it is just down to two players. What I actually did was I had an extra mage. What I really should have done is I should have taken out the um, I should have taken out the Vagar, and then I would have opened up an opportunity to play another legendary unit. Uh, in particular, Yone would have been a good unit to play because that would have synergized well with the Shen that I have in there. But I could have played another legendary unit in here, or I could have looked to play something like Aatrox, which would be a uh, good synergy with the. Um, would have been good synergy with the Vanguard on um, Orn. And right now, I'm trying to position to Zephyr out the um, the Yasuo on the other team. I actually miss, I get the Yone on the other team, which is not a bad unit at all. But Yasuo is the main carry on this uh, enemy team, and that's the one I want to try to focus with my um, uh, with my Zephyrs. So it's just the two of us. We're going to have a couple of rounds here. Whoever can win, is, you know, one of us is going to win the lobby. It's going to come down to which one of our team compositions is stronger. I think I have a little bit more room for my comp to get stronger here. I unfortunately do lose the, uh, do lose my Aurelian Soul, so it doesn't look like I'm going to win this round. There's the Chrono Shift from Zillion that brings Set back to life. It's going to get off another dunk, and that actually triggers the Guardian Angel on Yasuo, so now I'm going to beat up the training dummy. But, yeah, uh, needed to shift targets there. Uh, in case it wasn't already clear... You do not control any of your units in combat. The, everything's automated, which is one of the fun parts about this game. It's about building a team composition, not like who can micro their units better. Uh, good news is I've gotten another really useful item here. I've gotten a Shroud of Stillness, which is a terrible early game item, but a very good late game item. What it does is it causes, excuse me, it causes, uh, it shoots out kind of a, a straight line uh, of, I don't know what to call it. Like it, I was going to say a straight line skill shot, but it's not a skill shot. It's just, it like shoots this purple line to the other side of the screen. And any enemy champions hit, um, it requires more mana for them to get their first cast off at the beginning of the game. So yeah, I think ideally here, I would have grabbed the um, Yas I would have grabbed the Yones and replaced the, um, I think I would have replaced the Vagar with Yone, because like I actually got quite a few Yones here. Or with a Zero, a Zero would have been fine too. But we're going to two-star the Orn. That means Orn will forge items for us faster. We're actually going to get one run right away. We are going to get the Collector. It's an item that gives additional attack damage and crit chance, so it's a very good item for Zaya. And I'm going to position Shen to try to get that Shroud off. And did I get my Zephyr to hit the Yasuo on the enemy team? The the Zephyr, there it goes. It will. It basically works like a mirror. Um, it like reflects, and you hit the unit that um, is kind of like in the mirror reflection. So this is why scouting is important. 
Note that I get a Zephyr off on the enemy team's key unit, their carry unit, and I also get a Shroud of Stillness off that causes the um, most of their team to take longer to cast. So do we have enough left over here? Well, we've managed to get the Yone. Now can we get the Yasuo as well? Can Set get off a big dunk? Yes, he can. And that is enough to win the round. And I deal 19 damage to Rigatoni because we're all the way in stage 7, and you take a lot of damage by the time you hit stage 7. By the time you get to this point, the, the combat engine is like, hey, we want the game to be over. So I'm going to make two-star Set, and that's really nice. Remember, Set is the unit I turned into an Elderwood. He's a very good holder of the Elderwood unit, uh, the Elderwood spatula. He's not normally an Elderwood. Um, basically, he goes off, and when he dies, he goes off and does push-offs push-ups and then comes back into the fight. So basically he's going to get the full Elderwood stacks in the entire fight. Now I'm looking, did Rigatoni know to swap his Yasuo from this Zephyr? Did he move his unit? Well, actually no, he didn't. And he should have been scouting. So um, he did move some of his units to dodge the Shroud of Stillness, but it still hit his Yone and his Yasuo still missed the early part of the combat. He should have been scouting me and he should have known to move his units. So particularly at the end of the game, like earlier on in the game, you don't know who you're going to hit. It's somewhat, it's mostly random who you're going to hit, although it is a controlled randomness. Uh, but here at the end of the game, you know who you're going to hit. There's only one other player. And as it turns out, we have outscaled this player and we have managed to win. Um, so the positioning mattered and it's enough for us to take this match. So there you go. That is an early sample of set 4.5. I wanted to walk people through kind of the basics of this game because some people will probably be learning this game for the first time. I hope that this was entertaining. I hope that it was fun to see kind of how this game worked. I high rolled pretty good in this game, but I mean, that's part of the fun, right? Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, have a great week. I'll see you guys soon.